in a world that's besieged by a pandemic that we have never seen of this scale, it seems pretty apt for a global trends festival. While we are, there are trends that are horrific, honestly quite disturbing, and have been the center of decay of our moral and ethical fabric of our everyday lives, I'm frankly quite chuffed to be moderating a panel which is based on a trend which is quite the opposite. A panel that's filled with four of my close old friends and a topic that's really close to my heart, and that's music. So today I shall delve into the finer nuances of how music really affects our life, our businesses, and brings us together in a way that few things can. Life has vastly changed in the world of music in the last few decades, with the onset of the internet, technology, mobile, data, and us being one of the world's youngest nations. When most of us grew up, music was our salvation. It was always in and around us, depending on who we were. But let's face it, it was never the center of everything we did, simply because the world of only physical formats, live gigs, and artists would only give us that much interaction with music. But now with technology, the way it is that every single wall has been broken, every, all the walls have been demolished, and there isn't really more than two degrees of separation at any point of time from anything anymore. Sometimes the advancement of tech can really be damaging as we see around us every single day. But for music, it's been a revelation. It's changed the way we consume music, the way we use it, the ways it's found the space which is front and center of our lives. And today we're going to drill down and speak with some of our experts to suss out truly how much of a real social connector music is. So without further ado, let me esteem, let me introduce my esteemed panel. Let me start with my old friend, Sonal Dabral. Uh, I, I mean, all of these introductions are really a waste of time because most of these people are extremely well known. But Sonal is a writer, director, creative consultant based out of uh, Mumbai. Uh, he spent close to three decades, which is literally how old I am, uh, in, in advertising. Uh, working for Ogilvy and Meta. His last and most recent uh, stint was a CCO, which is Chief Creative Officer of Ogilvy uh, Southeast Asia. And his love for music has been very apparent in everything Sonal has ever done. And you know, some of his critical key ones, Yeah, Yari had number one, the long running friendship anthem of McDowell's number one. For uh, Uber, he recently wrote the 2019 Cricket World Anthem, Weo Weo, which was performed by artists all over the world, I think six of them. And his latest musical work right now, which is playing is uh, Tumera number one, Yar for McDowell's, which is a new poetry, as well as the official anthem for the RCB team uh, for the IPL 2020. So uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, so now, welcome to this. It's going to be fun. The next one is another very old friend, um, Tarsem. Tarsem Mittal is, again, one of uh, uh, extremely well-known uh, music and entertainment uh, entrepreneur. He's founded several businesses, but I think Tarsem and my uh, paths first crossed when he uh, founded his talent management company, which is called TMTM, strangely. Tarsem Mittal Talent Management. It's quite difficult to find four words which are your name as well as your business but he managed to you know found it and today it's become it's it's, it's, it's truly become the largest and most preferred talent management company um, in our country he represents a bevy of artists from Vishal Shekhar to Arijit Singh to a whole bunch of people young and old and uh, he's, he's truly one of the most important people in our lives because apart from all the other businesses that he does which is uh, uh, something called truly comical and truly musical where there are some IPs but what he has done for us is he is now created in its fourth year running which is going to be year five next year the most important music conference of them all called All About Music and which is something that we partner on so uh, that's become sort of the center of the universe for this, uh, this business so you know uh, Tarsem welcome I, I have no doubt you're going to be a really important uh, part of this conversation. Uh, and you. then we will go to, then we will go to uh, the suit in this, uh, because regrettably, I'm not the only suit in this uh, conversation. My other good friend, Viral Jani. Uh, Viral is a Senior Vice President of Investment Operations at Times Bridge. I know that's a mouthful, but basically it means he's a super important guy. And he runs the operations, the India operations of Times Bridge, which is the global investment and partnerships arm of um, the, the Times of India group. And he looks after the India, uh, you know, success and growth of a portfolio of global companies. And uh, these are names that you would know. Uber, Airbnb, Coursera, Smule, and Headspace. And, you know, Vera has been, uh, built his career at the intersection of media and technology. Uh, prior to this, he was in Twitter, where he was running the content and partnerships vertical. But he's a bang-up guy. He's doing stuff with music and tech in a way that really gladdens us, and he touches all our lives. So, Vera, welcome as well. And last but not the least. The, the 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 real the real monster in this group, my good old friend CB. Uh, he's now moving his hands because I, I should actually just say a, a, a polite introduction to him and not what I really want to say. But Carlton is Carlton is just 
probably one of the most talented people I, I ever had the privilege of knowing, calling brother and family, and actually working alongside with. He's a, been a restauranter, he is an artist, he's a great photographer, a designer, a writer, an entertainer. I mean, he does everything to everything. I mean, to quote him, he says he has his fingers in many pies, his heart on his sleeve, a glass in his hand, and a song on his lips. But, um, you know, he, he had this great almost cultish venue called Opus, where even my, my band, while growing up, Brahma, we've played there. I think, I think everyone in India has played there once upon a time. Um, he, um, from making Dutch people sing in a bar in Amsterdam to running massive corporate gigs to singing for some of the biggest weddings in, you know, Versailles or Marseille or whatever have it. I mean, this guy's done it all, right? So uh, he is one of the finest singers. And I mean, I, I call him, he has the voice of a higher being. And, and, and to me, uh, I think he's also important to have truly somebody who's using all of these wonderful things that we're discussing, he actually puts it to you. So welcome, welcome, gents. I'm very, very pleased to have you and I'm very chuffed to moderate this panel. So let's get right to it. So let me start with, Let's just let's just chat music, right? So I want each of you to tell me, and we'll and I'll tell you in which order we'll go. I just want you to know very quickly, succinctly, what does music mean to each one of you, both personally and professionally. So I want to start with Sonal, uh, go to Tarsem, move to Viral, and then have uh, CB end this. So just very quickly, in your own words, in a couple of lines, whatever, what music means to you? Music like uh, music has been really really close to my heart uh, when I was growing up. And maybe because I was growing up in a big family where music influences were there, there were, you know, uh, uncles and brothers and all who liked singing and all. So I took it on early in my life. But, you know, one story that I really remember, which is, uh, which is a, such a fascinating story for me uh, because of the career that I did, uh, is that I saw the power of uh, uh, the, the music, the, the power that music can give to a brand. And uh, so in Agra, there used to be, you know, these come winter time, there used to be galore, you know, and when weddings, there used to be these bands. So there was this band called Agra band. Yeah. And at night, every time a wedding happened, and this, these are obviously the days before uh, any kind of television, mobile, internet, whatever was there, Correct. right? So anytime a band came, yeah, on which on a thela, there used to be the singer, you know, singing Gori Tera Gao Bada Piara and all that. And it used to be fascinating. People used to gather on their balconies to look down with all this Agra band passing, with all these, you know, lanterns and pa -pa 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 -pa, all that happening, you know. And uh, there was a singer there, one, you know, very Elvis Presley-like, you know. He was, I think, influenced by Elvis Presley. He used to wear white uh, shirt, white bell bottoms, white shoes, and sing with Elan, you know, and he's, he, he had a good voice. That that uh, singer was actually the local sabji seller, you know, so at night he became a singer. In the morning, he was a sabji seller. Now, when my aunt, when my mom and my nani used to send me to buy sabji, you know, are, Tashu, jake sabji le gao. I used to go, he was the most expensive of the, of the, of all the sabji balas, right? But I used to go straight to him and I used to look at him, you know, like as if I'm looking at Elvis Presley himself or a big singer. And I used to say, you know, you know, I used to ask for, you know, give me one kg potatoes and all that. And then I used to <laughs> smile and come back. You know, so it was complete hero worship. And I used to come back home and I used to get uh, uh, shouting from my mom and my nani that I spend more money, but by, but but I again went to the same guy. So Correct. that later when I realized, you know, that was like a brand, you know, getting so much, so to say, power by the sheer force of music. And then came Correct. cut to, you know, if I've uh, got a little more time on this, cut to my first experience with music or the power of music in advertising. So I was a rookie in advertising, just begun, and I was in, uh, I had, uh, uh, we had done this campaign for this new brand of chips, a uh, small office, and uh, we had done this campaign, and at that point in time, uh, all the advertising used to be mostly in very proper English, you know. So we had done this, which was, uh, it was meant for teenagers, teenagers are the target audience. And we had done this campaign, uh, looking for fun and Benny's the one. Benny's, it was for Benny's chips. Yeah. So very nice line. And I was also the art director on it. So I had done this really nice typography, looking for fun. Benny's the one with all these, you know, teens, you know, with guitar and a uh, packet of chips. And, and uh, 
we said you know it was a very very big pitch you know multi pitch so we said uh, let's uh, test it so we went to these uh, you know called some teens teenagers into this household in lajpat nagar in delhi yeah this was in delhi and we went there and the research uh, research agency is now researching the boards and the kids are saying yeah very nice you know i mean yeah i like the picture uh, the line is very good you know for fun beneath the one and uh, there was this little cute uh, brother was part of the group research group and he had come with his older brother so while the research is going on i, I casually asked this uh, little boy and he's like barely maybe 6 7 years old and i asked him uh, uh, you like chips aapko chips pasand hai mujhe to bahut pasand hai yeah he said i am that you know so i said uh, and the he the dude had attitude you know i mean he was like you're coming on like that mujhe to bahut pasand hai you know so i said uh, so how do you buy you know i'm now probing probing him for my for some clues right so he said i don't go with my brother right i go all alone i take money from my brother i go to the shop and i point to the chips right and i say mujhe to wahi wala chahiye i want that one that one right and uh, and he's saying this all in you know part punjabi part hindi you know and uh, i was loving his attitude and it occurred to me that you know we are saying looking for fun beneath the one and uh, here's this boy there's so much attitude in that line that i want that chips you know and at that point in time there was this song which was a big hit i think it was mithun chakravarti film which was juli juli jwani ka dil tujh pe aaya juli right correct okay. and something happened in my head and i said uh uh binis binis naya naya chips binis and humko binis mangta so that line that he said i said if 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 he had a line with as much attitude as this young sikh boy uh, where we don't want any other chips humko binis mangta line right there and by the time we went back to our office i had kind of you know written a very lame song which was based on juli juli jwani ka tuch dil tuch pe aaya juli lame because you know if you if you uh, if you hear the lyrics right now juli juli uh, binis binis naya naya ye chips binis is ki hai har baat nahi yahi to meri jaan hai jaan hai jaan hai so these are lame lyrics right so i mean i just began in advertising i'd written a line which i kind of liked i went back to office did a completely new campaign right with this hum mangta and i did this hand a uh, handcraft typography rather than taking a typeface and then this we made so uh, uh, so quickly to finish the story the client liked the idea but was not sure because because at that point in time it was so disruptive there was no hindi line at that time most most lines used to be in english if you remember <clears throat> he he did a party with his uh, he called for a party for his kids right and there he tested both the campaigns and everybody loved humko binis banta so that film was made and that became a super hit you know and uh, and then i was trying to analyze why did it become a super hit partly it was really to do with the line the disruption of the line but it was to do with that very very cashy music along with that line you know that that uh, and every time now even till date when you hear humko binis mangta you have those singing and dancing boys in front of your eyes yeah 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 and that then then continued into you know which i'll talk about later into uh, how music has played bigger and bigger role in my uh, no, no i clearly understand i think i think music and music and advertising yeah i mean they're they're so yeah, they're it's so true. intertwined is not it's even funny true, true. that sounds very quickly now about. that Now that Sonal has said many stories and eaten all your time, quickly tell us your relationship with music, and I also specifically because out of all the things that you've done, you've actually ended up uh, making your own label, also called TM, by the way, TM Music. Where did where did where where how? I am one of the lower class, lower middle class family uh, from India, and I had no clue to music. I mean, I had no relationship to music since I was born. Uh, I started doing things which came my way to feed my family. 
and eventually after uh, taking that uh, you know finishing that first gen- journey of getting settled uh, i realized almost 8 9 years back that you know i think music is my thing you know i understand music the most i love doing concert i love being with musicians i love being in studio i love to discuss music and that is the time i realized no oh, yeah this is the thing for me and uh, i mean there is no uh, logical reason for me to, i mean actually Correct. i can't i can't explain it. but then i realized that let's okay let's now only focus on music and that's the time i started my management company and as you as you rightly said i found a, a, a synonym tm uh, tarsem mittal talent management truly musical and it worked for me and i tried my level best to just stick to music uh, since then so last 8 years i haven't done anything apart from music so anything i do my, right from my management to my consulting to uh, bollywood music project to all about music to a music label uh, the whole idea is to do anything and everything which uh, connects music and people so that's what i'm doing and in that same uh, you know in the same direction uh, music label was something which we i always wanted to do uh, because you know there are a lot of young talents which i have come across in life and i really feel that they need uh, a stage they need a platform and tm music gives us that opportunity and i'm extremely proud and happy that we have been able to launch at least four five new artists in in the span of six months only the latest and one the latest one is pretty pretty cool i i shared it yesterday you. very very good yanusham mm-hmm. uh, money and uh, goldie sohel song very very nice we roll very quickly since you run uh, you know a, a, a whole bunch of international brands uh, for their operations for the country uh, specifically i want to mm-hmm. since this is a conversation about music tell me tell me about smeo yeah so i can do a quick sort of riff about my personal connection with music and you know no no major stories over here but uh, for me music personally it means uh, it's like a time machine so you know for me it's like i slot my life in different moments of life and uh, music kind of gets associated with each of them and then i can actually travel back to those moments in music so that's just like me as a sort of personal music uh, consumer um in my professional life i have done uh, you know a bunch of things around music um if i were to give an example um or a metaphor i am if you guys are swimming in the pacific ocean i am swimming in the olympic sized swimming pool uh, that's my association with music so i do many things with technology and music is one of those uh, but uh, at at times bridge uh, we've been running smul for 2 years now and uh, it's been Uh, a phenomenal journey um, you know it's a very very uh, uh, cool platform which unlocks creativity and expression for music fans across the world and uh, they did a pretty amazing job of doing that across the world and we been lucky to have them in india uh, and we have unlocked a lot of uh, great musical communities in, in different languages different parts of the country and uh, have been opportunity to kind of work with some of the great uh, artists young and old and uh, we continue to kind of uh, look at this opportunity in a big way uh, we believe that this is a platform for uh, i would say the most uh, evolved musical fans and uh, it is it is a platform which gives um, which is democratized music creation and and singing so okay so we'll we we'll, we'll get into we'll get into so you you are both sides of it personally deeply into music professionally apart from everything else that you do obviously music plays a big part uh, very quickly cb i mean to me music is your oxygen you can't I mean, you're you're like me you're crazy you can't live without music very quickly just tell us what music means to you uh, as you said it i mean uh, music means everything to me i grew up uh, grew up in a bandra household uh, surrounded by music surrounded by choirs and church and 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 uh, all i took out of that entire childhood was music i mean the 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 rest is all uh, kind of blurs out uh, but uh, yeah so i find my space i find uh, i mean i i'm i'm uh, contrary to what people believe i'm i'm kind of an introvert but uh, i find my uh, my my hiding space on stage so to speak i mean i love i i i love that uh, as janice said you know you 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 make love to 25000 people uh, and then you go home alone that 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 vibe is 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 fantastic and 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 i thrive on it and uh, i i've i found myself uh, uh, all along the way finding connects uh, with music and and with people and uh, 
yeah, uh, whether it be Opus or whether it be uh, now uh, what we've done uh, in the lockdown, which we probably will talk about uh, later. But uh, yeah. but music has been, has been everything uh, everything to me, and I, I I don't restrict myself to a particular kind of music. I've even uh, uh, sung some metal with a friend of mine uh, in o in Opus who shared <laughs> who shared stage with me. But uh, uh, but yeah, uh, it's it's been it's been a, a <clears throat> it's it, it's been it's been part of my oxygen and part of my life. Uh, so clearly, clearly, I... you know, music. So music clearly impacts popular culture. You know, all the way from Bini's Manta, which is probably I don't know, 20, 30 years old, to you know, uh, talent and talent management and labels in in that world, to actual technology, which is allowing the social fabric to sort of you know dissolve and people come together, and then people like Alton are actually using that to uh, you know sort of. Um, propagate this entire world of music and its industry forward. Uh, I quickly want to touch upon how it actually does, right? So for example, and, and let's, let's go back to uh, uh, Sonal for a minute. You had this incredible story that you told us about, you know, when we were discussing your relations with music. Can you tell us in your 30 plus year career, are there one or two really memorable moments where music, I mean, maybe, maybe you know, uh, your, your McDowell's, uh, uh, you know, uh, Yari number one would be a great example, where music has been the centrifuge of the entire narrative. The entire story could not have been told if it wasn't music, right? It wasn't just the words or, you know, interesting copy or, or great text and subtext or whatever. But music, it started with music. Everything else was later around music. Can you give us an example in your world where you actually believe that because of music and an advertising idea, you were actually able to impact popular culture as it stands today. And it could be, you know, I would ideally like an example in the last maybe four or five years, but even if it goes back a little, that's fine. So there are uh, many examples uh, internationally and nation nationally where music has played a kind of big part in terms of the success or enduring success, whether it's you take Bajaj or even Airtel, her friend, her ek friend zaruri hota hai. But uh, again, where, where everything started with music, you know, one example, which is uh, again, very, really close to my heart is uh, actually number one, number one Yari uh, campaign is a very good example of that. Exactly what your question was, which where it was not a support to the idea, but where the idea itself started from the, from the song or from the music. Correct. And uh, again, to give you a short story, I'll keep it short this time. Uh, we had again produced a campaign for friendship was the platform for McDowell's number one for quite some time. And we were looking for how to evolve it and how to make it more cut through, how to connect better, better, because it's a, it's a very, very powerful emotion, the emotion of friendship. Of course. And uh, so friendship was the platform and we had created a campaign which we were about to present to the client. And I was with my teams in Bangalore and uh, on the flight, i had been just generally reading on friendship and checking out certain videos. And uh, that evening when I was sitting and reviewing the campaign, what suddenly I went back to that morning when I was reviewing, I mean, watching certain videos on friendship, you know, these farewell videos that, uh, that friends produce when you are graduating from college Good. or yeah, from an yeah. office. You know? And you put those those photographs there and you realize that those are very emotional because they are very authentic, very, you know, many of those videos I found had the soundtrack of that famous KK song on friendship. Yaro Dosti Badi. Yaro Dosti. So, yeah, that's a, a very powerful friendship song. And that evening when I was reviewing the campaign, I suddenly thought that what if a powerful brand like McDowell's number one created the next friendship anthem for. So let's not look at advertising. Let's look, let's ask this question. What if a powerful brand whose platform is friendship creates the next anthem of friendship for India? So I told myself that the true test for this campaign success or this platform success will be if people start using this anthem that we have still not written. Correct. Two, three years down the line on their farewell videos. That's what I told myself. And then I said that I, that I sat down and I wrote this over the next uh, two, three, four hours. You know, just words came, you know, from my 
memory went into childhood memories and all that and uh, we presented the song so we didn't present the campaign next day i told the client we have got a campaign for you you know which has got all uh, television ads and print ads and all that but we are not presenting that to you i'd like to present an anthem to you which will be the next friendship anthem for india yeah and uh, i had already gotten a uh, scratch done overnight from uh, rajiv bhalla who finally composed the music and i i said uh, sit down don't worry about the campaign but listen to a song listen to the next friendship anthem for india and we listen to that song uh aisi waisi dosti nahi har aasma se uchi hai samundron se gehri waisi dosti nahi ye number 1 yaar hai and the full song was there scratch song you know just played on the guitar but i think it had emotions it had the power of music everything that we did and from that started the whole campaign then we worked out a story around it of three boys who go back to a city and they kind of they have a this question on their heads in their heads that who was the favorite of them all uh, in their the, their their teacher's mind you know and she says none of you was favorite your jari was favorite all so <laughs> that was a nice culmination to the song how the how how for happened. how long has for how long has the campaign been running how many years has it been this was uh, this was uh, i think uh, 2000 and uh, uh 13 or 14 i think so five six years at least uh, 2013 or 14 i think so six seven years at least and that platform ye number one yari hai so number one yari then became the platform and then Correct. came the second uh, second ad which was again music played a big part and evolving from there music has become a huge part of mcdonald's number one brand uh Uh, then uh, there were lots of activations done you know with uh, various yes, uh, yeah, yeah. directors you had concerts yeah, you had yeah yeah i think it's concerts, a, it's a great example sonal because it is how a song and a and a and a music music and and words and lyrics that 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 make a great song can become the centrifuge of an entire brand's campaign for more than half a decade right i mean that's what we're talking about is music a true social connector i think you know in 2020 when you say a social connector you're often thinking uh, facebook watch parties or you know uh, going live on twitter or or or, or snap or you know uh, insta or whatever but i think the genesis of how music socially connects people is from 5 7 years ago when social media was still brand new and technology wasn't there you know imagine imagine if smule were around or you know something like that 6 years ago what could have happened to this so that i think it's a it's, it's a great story I, i think it only justifies the fact that music is a true social connector for advertisers for the consumers for human beings for us as listeners for us as musicians i think it brings together and connects more things than is otherwise possible in any other form and factor uh, that's some very quickly with you obviously you know you are enabling the artists and the structures that allow for what sonal is saying today for it to happen how important is what you do in your world of you know running running the entire backbone and the spine of all of this how important is that i mean how much of social culture are you like arijit is writing a, a whole new history on 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 the way music and uh, you know i mean though he is completely non social but he is writing a whole history on music right so is vishal shekhar and so on everyone else from your back end perspective how important is what you're doing um, actually you know connecting people socially uh it is extremely important devraj i uh, genuinely believe that uh, music is a creator to consumer economy the creator creates True. music for consumers True. and all of us are in the mix whether it is manager labels whoever we are you know we are all in the mix uh the truth is that uh, uh, if you remember your childhood i mean uh, you will have a lot of music to remember a lot of films to remember a lot of uh, you know sort of scenes uh, to remember and uh, music has influenced your childhood you know and today it has become a commercial economy you know you you produce what you sell but there are some artists like arijit and vishal and all other artists who has a perspective you know who has a perspective about life who have a perspective about how they feel how they look at things and they primarily not might not uh, look at the commercial and the market uh, policies and factors only so it definitely affects uh, uh, socially and culturally completely you know uh, whatever you have to say and social media is also a tool 
when we see, when we use the word True. social social media is just a tool ranbir kapoor is not on social media is he not popular it doesn't matter he is popular there are a lot of True. people who might True. not be active on a specific social media but i would say uh, even if you give a press interview that is also a social communication uh, for me it's just that some people do not communicate every day every hour you know every single minute but they do communicate they communicate maybe once in 6 months or once in 3 months so uh, in a nutshell i would say that you know uh, it's extremely important and you know it really there really there for the narratives true that's true that's true i i i, I completely agree i agree uh, because you know, uh, as a uh, as a youngster as a youngster or as an audience i am able to see a new perspective of life through music correct to new perspective of culture through music so true. that's true. why it is important yeah Okay. I mean, let's talk about popular culture with uh, with 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 Carlton for a quick second, and I'll go to Veer. Um, and let's specifically talk these last seven months that we've been in a lockdown, right? I mean, truly, a time when connection was in desperate need. People could not leave their homes for you know lockdown one, two, three. Horrible, horrible times, right? And without technology, we'd frankly be dead because our lives have now become a set of Zoom calls and and WhatsApp calls and whatever have you. And here is an artist who actually said. let me truly be the connection of uh, of social fabric through music irrespective of who you are where you are which part of the world you are i mean i've been part of you know something that <laughs> carlton does called jukebox jammies which is now i think in its 120 something version where there are people chatting from australia from the us and completely weird time zones but there is no better example in my head in these last 7 months where somebody has taken technology and music and leave the tech uh, apart uh, cb will come to that in the next next part but taken music and connected people socially in a way that i have never seen so i quickly want you to tell everyone and because this topic this whole trends conversation is about music being a social connector and i think you're a very vital piece of it so tell us quickly in your own words in the next few minutes what what made you think of jukebox jammies and like i said leave the tech aside how you did it and how have you managed to keep it going for for so many months I mean, how do you do it what was your objective okay. when you started and have you achieved it <laughs> so as i uh, i mean uh, as i keep telling people uh, it's 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 an accidental uh, 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 i mean I, i i i started it off as a joke uh, i was i was touring gigging all across the world uh, over the last year and and even at the beginning of the year and i did uh, I did a couple of gigs at the beginning of the year and uh, was doing a, a with uh, with uh, with your friend uh, Samir Bangera. We were doing a like a twelve city tour, uh, uh, and in the middle of that, it got the the uh, uh, the plug got pulled. Uh, we had finished six cities, and uh, and I found myself in Chennai saying that uh, you know, I mean, the the, the world was kind of uh, uh, unsure about what was happening. I went to uh, I went. Uh, I found a cheap ticket, went on a holiday to uh, uh, to Colombo on in the in on the I think it was the tenth of March, and fifteenth uh, uh, of March or so uh, uh, there were cases happening in Sri Lanka. I was almost uh, uh, willing to 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 uh, stay the lockdown in Sri Lanka, uh, but I got the last flight back here, and then I think Modi kind of uh, announced this Chanta curfew. Uh, and said uh, you know uh, whatever i as a joke went online that night and i said uh, uh, modi is not allowing me to get out of my house uh, i'm going to i'm going to i'm going <laughs> to i'm going to uh, do a half an hour uh, half an hour one hour request thing in the night uh, uh, whoever is there let's let's have a drink together some shit like that uh, i uh, i went uh, online and i i i i did this i had about 20 people i think devraj also must have come in uh, did a very rudimentary thing uh, with uh, with you know bluetooth speaker and 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 sang a few songs and uh, people started calling people in uh, you know i and and i said i'll i'll, I'll do this till till such time that i can get out of my bedroom and uh, did 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 this for a couple of days uh, you know the numbers kept uh, it it kind of became this you know oh he's doing this the, this one hour in the day where people can actually come together and 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 say hi to each other and uh, over the next couple of days it 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 kind of became uh, something that okay it it uh, made me also feel that i needed to kind of uh, do it it was it was making a difference to uh, certain people i didn't even know 
most of it that was happening uh, i was oblivious to most of it but uh, uh, so i had i had friends coming in like you know some really uh, specialist guys like like Dwayne came in with uh, and helped me with with a little bit of sound and 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 i had some uh, tech sorted out and uh, you know those 20 became uh, uh, those two digit numbers became three and three became um, became even four and uh, uh, i kind of uh, you know had this uh, this this virtual community coming together every night 9 30 uh, uh, and 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 waiting for me to be there and and uh, I mean, from from doing like a you know uh, just uh, having having a request uh, show, people were just throwing songs at me, and it kind of helped that I I could do most of it. But uh, uh, it it became this 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 uh, this community, uh, and and the music was incidental eventually. But it was this 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 whole uh, this whole community that came together. I I also uh, you know started touching upon things that I grew up with. Uh, a church and choirs and and zonals and competitions and 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 somebody told me uh, in a message and and I used to get messages by the by the thousands I think uh, somebody told me in a message that says this is just taking me to an uncomplicated happy space and and uh, you know when 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 things were 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 nice and 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 uh, what, what this what, what this uh, uh, brought was friends and music and 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 connections and people were just getting together after so many years so it it kind of uh, it kind of became a really cool uh, hangout uh, i would say more than anything else and and the music yeah, was I, the, I, the music i don't, was think, the I don't even think it was it was just uh, it was just i think to me and i've been on out of the 125 i've probably been on 100 plus and i'll tell you this it was it was like, you know, what Facebook, when we discovered Facebook so now, many years ago, you know, it was like, oh my God, you found this friend who was 20 years ago and you suddenly started, you know, connecting. And on, on, on Jukebox Jammies, there are actually parallel conversations happening. So I'm talking to my buddies in Bandra, right? Neil and Brian, all, all our friends. And we're having a parallel conversation about not even some of the songs he's singing. That is I true remember. social connection where music is uh -huh. happening here. People are having a yeah. chat and everyone is intersecting and it is a ridiculous community of people brought together using music technology and great vibes really, which is uncommon to see right in a time when people are stuck at home, depressed, whatever, you know, working in, in oh. different environments. Here was this yeah. incredible breath of fresh air and yeah. it was just the most refreshing thing to say. And I'm, I'm just going to cut quickly to you and to Viral very quickly is I want to talk technology because I saw the technology change in front of my eyes to his rudimentary yeah. setup in, in, in day one, which was, you know, Bluetooth speaker or whatever, there was a version two. And the truth of the matter is the version two was crap. We couldn't hear yeah. stuff. You know, it, it was, it was all over the place, but somehow suddenly he migrated from okay, decent technology to flawless world-class technology. How did that happen? Tha? And I want to take that and then quickly, Viral, I want you to now bring technology into this because without technology, all of these wonderful things that we're discussing, whether it is Tasim's artist giving their point of view into the world to improve social culture and, uh, you know, a popular culture or, or Sonal's examples of how music and culture is actually changing culture. Without technology, none of this is possible. We would fail, fail miserably if technology wasn't there. So quickly, Carlton, can you tell me how did, and you are, okay, by the way, for those who don't know Carlton, he is the anti-techie. The fact that he <laughs> operates a phone is a humongous thing. When he started chatting with us on WhatsApp comfortably, it was amazing. The day he sent me a voice note, I wanted to like fly to Bangalore and garland him because it was, it was incredible. Carlton using a phone and technology to using technology in a way that I am unable to use technology. Carlton. Uh -huh. so, so a couple of things couple of things uh, uh one is uh one is yeah i i i was i was those initial days where i was just looking at the screen are you there uh can you see me uh can you hear me send a message uh if you can and all, all of that i mean you, you know to 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 having a slick uh production uh, uh as as it and and I, I i'll take a step back and i'll say that you know when i started this i said i will continue doing this uh, for as long as uh, required if any of these three things are met one is if if uh, if obviously there's money coming in uh, two <laughs> two is uh, if if uh, uh, you know if uh, if the audience exponentially kind of increases which was happening every day and and three is if 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 the production or if the show becomes uh, becomes cooler by the day and and all three kind of uh, 
kind of happened and happened simultaneously and happened uh, uh, so i had no reason to really stop it because because uh, from from me being alone in my bedroom to taking requests it started becoming uh, uh, stuff that i could get guests in uh, uh, we we had we had we had uh, uh, private dues within the uh, the whole uh, you know uh, yeah but all of, all of that all of that, that yeah. was technology how did technology, technology how did you use technology so how did i use technology i mean I, as i said i was really fortunate that i had friends who happened to be part of that uh, uh, that initial uh, band of people that were listening to me uh, like i remember neil uh, calling up uh, uh, calling up dwayne and saying sort this guy out uh, you know and 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 dwayne comes with his own uh, with his own set of uh, 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 right. really cool uh, background and then i had somebody in goa who is uh, uh, who uh, who who's now become a dear friend and and who helped me with you know setting up obs and 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 getting uh, you know you know that whole very slick thing that uh, you know we we could we could uh, multi stream into into uh, uh, into instagram and facebook and youtube at the same time and all of these things were like wow dude we can can we do this and every day we would be testing on different platforms uh, uh, you know during the day and doing this in the night as an experiment and the next day would be better and and i and i told somebody that 125 shows i can look back on on the previous one and and it there was a marked improvement so every day we i i I'd, I'd make sure that there was one change whether it be a, a scroll or whether it be a, a, a you know something different on my screen or whether it be a different guest coming in so it was i, I was constantly looking at and doing something new uh, every day so no, clearly, so yeah clearly so, Carlton, i think yeah tech tech I without tech i don't think any of yeah any of what you would have tr- attempted to yeah. do wouldn't have happened but yeah, on the other yeah. side of tech, so one is trying to bring together people uh, from your own socials and other people's socials and creating great music and creating a community is one thing. I want to quickly yeah. go to you, Vera, who into a world where there is a community which is already sitting there. There is an active music, active music community who is already engaged, singing with each other across the world. I mean, borders are no longer a thing. And your technology as Mule is pretty, pretty damn good. So I want you to tell me in the context of how regular technology is enhancing what we are trying to do in terms of, you know, being a social connector. Give me the, the give me the smule view of of the world of music and tech. Smule view. Uh, if you ever use it with a TM, please uh, not this TM. Uh, please remember that I, I coined it. Smule view. It's pretty cool. Tell us. <laughs> smule view. Uh, so fundamentally, what technology does is, uh, you know, basically makes the offline world come alive in the online world, right? So it's solving offline problems and it's making it more and more accessible to people in the online world. So uh, social singing expression uh, through singing on social platforms is is pretty much the same thing. We already do that in the offline world um, and it is kind of going, this is uh, this is taking it to the online world. Um, what, what really, uh, if you look at the evolution of like social platforms, we started with Facebook uh, and and platforms like that, where we had like basically people connecting with each other in our small circles, and it was basically status updates. That moved into public expression, which was mostly Instagram or Twitter, where there is one too many sort of communication. And then there is a third wave of sort of uh, platforms which came, which enabled creation, and it made it really easy for creation of content. And Smule is that third generation of. Uh, I would say a social network, which is making it very easy for, you know, regular, not, not only the singers, singers of course can use the platform and they can actually sound really good, but regular sing- people like you uh, or me, uh, sorry, you, you are not a part of that. Uh, like me, for example, who's not a singer at all, but um, I can actually sound good on the platform yeah, because there is already like a technology in the background, which is doing magic to my singing uh, and making me sound much, much, much better. And that it is exists giving, in the real world uh, also. It's it's called exactly. Melodyne, and and a lot of our very established singers sing it. It's called Auto Tune for the for the uninitiated. Don't worry, it, it's all good. It's not good. But I think uh, what what that has done is that it basically allows you to take that uh, you know performance and put out on social platforms, other social platforms. It builds builds community, and we've seen that magic happen, right? And uh, essentially, what it does is that there is a rallying around that happens. Uh, Regular folks like me or anyone who doesn't have a uh, singing background can actually have thousands of followers on the platform. Uh, they make friends with music and they, they also create music with their friends. 
So it's a very very interesting sort of uh, entangling of. Can you of define? Can you happen. define? Can you define for me in three words what Smule does for everyone else watching? Smule, like if if there were three Smule, words that Smule delivers, what does it do? Make friends with music. Okay. Make friends with that's music. One. Basically, that's that's pretty much pretty much that. And uh, essentially, it allows you to creatively express your uh, singing, and uh, it lets you unlock the in inner sort of uh, creativity, right? So, which is what Smule does. And um, it, in, in 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 today's day and age, like you know, post pandemic world, and even before that, we've come across examples of people who have literally uh, used the platform. It it's improve help them improve their mental health. Like I have known folks who sing three songs a day every day. despite of having a day job and they will say okay i was having a stressful day at my job and and hence i had to sing on fuel just to kind of you know get myself out there uh and that has helped them in in their regular sort of managing stress and 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 the routine of the life and we've seen this happen in the, during the lockdown even more and you know essentially what has happened is that has led to some crazy number of uh, you know downloads we have seen more than 200% increase in downloads more than 130% increase in the monthly active users during the lockdown period and all of this is happening because uh, you know like everyone else is people are like kind of locked in at home and this has become sort of an expression uh, tool to kind of uh, go out how much uh, how much, how much example, of what you do in smule, example, sorry how much of how much of what you do in smule is social what is the social component just for me to understand like if if 100% social? was everything that smule does how much is the social part of it everything everything is social because essentially what you do is one can create your own solo solo song you can sing along with a friend or an artist or sing along with someone who you don't even know but just discovered on the platform uh and then you share it with your uh, circles within smule and outside of smule so right oh, from so within smule the song that you sing yeah and okay. with it, right from selection of the song to singing to sharing and co-creating everything is everything is social on on the platform okay excellent that so i i think yeah i mean truly the the level of tech that's come in and now you know allowing people to do i have a, I have a, I have a really bizarre question what carlton does could he do that in within smule absolutely he can he can do that he on could, smule could and he, he can actually could he run could he run a show where 30000 people come and watch him within smule is it that is possible? possible absolutely possible absolutely possible yes oh, that's uh, you gentlemen need to you gentlemen need to speak offline for sure because uh, you know what the hell also i kind of uh, step in here and say that we did i mean uh, uh, karaoke as an on ground thing also we did a, uh, a, a rather large on uh, when we were with opus and we did uh, uh, you know it took it to 12 cities at one point and uh, you know found it, it's a great uh, uh, it's a great tool to find talent as well so so that's something that uh, uh, that is an interesting one that yeah. uh, i think i think for me so we, i think for me personally yeah. you know we bypassed we bypassed the digital era right there was on ground karaoke which was great which brought people together and you know i yeah. i remember before we started it was you know good old melvin joined at soul fry for the ones who lived in bandra would understand every monday so night there were a whole bunch of people there were no place to sit stand it was ridiculous yeah. and everyone was singing their faces off great singers rubbish singers but it was just a place where people got together you know now yeah. when you take yeah. soul fry as an example can soul fry become the size of a country that is what smule is doing that is what carlton is trying to do that is what you are doing yeah. through your brand advertising right you are taking music and you are trying to socially connect different networks within the world to come together onto one communal or communal is a, probably the wrong word but one sort of pre agreed way for people to interact which they haven't done before you know and i think that is incredible to do but i saw in the middle there was a whole bunch of people who tried to do the digital karaoke piece and it fell miserably the number of people who called me for digital karaoke licenses are in the in the in the tens of hundreds right and i said no to each one of them because i just didn't realize or think that it could do anything and truly even for the ones that we tried to work with it never did anything but the minute social social karaoke came in and social digital social plus digital and social plus tech came in it just it just took the on ground situation and it flew so i do believe that even for you know social culture to be impacted or for anything social to happen the whole intersection of social media where all of us are a community in different parts also needs to be interwoven in a way that's 
spectacularly strong. Otherwise, none of these businesses are going to fly. And then music is never going to become a social connector. You know, it, 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 it's a, I mean, this topic is a bit of a duopoly, right? It's a social connector by connecting people. It's also a social connector because it uses media and especially social media, where all of us are already pre-existing communities to come together to give life to this technology. Otherwise, this technology ain't going anywhere. Individually, if I come and sing and Sonal comes and sing, there is no joy unless and until Sonal and I can find each other through Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and then sing and then share it and tell 20 more people who will then tell 20,000 more people. And that that ability for it to it to blossom and become a, a real business can only happen with that. Sorry, Carlton, you were saying? I'm going to stop you, uh, stop you for a second here and tell you that uh, when we started Opus also, it was, I mean, uh, we had a very internal kind of fight. Uh, to do a karaoke night there, and and uh, I I said I said to Gina uh, at the time, uh, you know, you give me a date that is that is not uh, that that is not a business night, and 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 I'll start I'll start a karaoke. Night. Initially, started singing to myself as I did with Dukbox Uh uh but then created. I mean, I, I guess the the key is to create an audience, and and once you create an audience, you have, you have people there of of worth that want to come there. And 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 sing, uh, uh, and it becomes a social activity at, at the end of the day. And then right. we ran for almost two years with like uh, 400 plus people there uh, on a karaoke night, yeah. which, which became one of the biggest properties that we had. And 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 you know, I had we had we had people like Ushna and we had Benny coming from Chennai yeah. just to sing. I remember on a Sunday. Yeah. And and uh, it, it it became it became a really cool activity. I mean, they 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 they, they, they were there. For the fun, they were there. For the people, they were there. For the vibe, and 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 uh, which is what which is what uh, I see you doing with uh, with Smule, uh, uh, digitally as well. You, uh, you, you, I, think, you I think that's the thing, right? I, I I think I think you hit the nail on the head, right? Vibe, vibe is a very but real vibe, world vibe phenomenon. Is, it's an impossible thing to take digitally, right? You can't take yeah. vibe and import it or quote it into the world of digital. It's very difficult, right? Like I know I run, I run a, a significantly large label or labels, and I know how difficult it is for artists to be in this pandemic, semi lockdown now world where it's almost impossible. But again, today we are seeing that technology is allowing us to do stuff that we never did. You know, Tassim, for your, your, your artist, for example, you have not stopped releasing music. You, I mean, let's face it. And here is what I tell everyone. We are in a fully digital business, but to create digital products, it is a fully physical process to create the digital product, which is the most difficult thing. Like in Smule, for example, it is a digital product in which you are digitally present to create a digital product, which then gets distributed digitally. But in the real world of music, we have to sit, literally have you have to be in a studio to sing. You have to be, you know, if uh, if 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 uh, uh, Sonal is creating a brand jingle, there has to be an advertising uh, setup within a studio. When you're shooting a thing, you need, you know, a studio flow. So a lot of that has really, really been tough in this time where it's been restrictive at best. So Tassim, tell me, and I, I know this of myself and I want to ask you as well. The fact that you're releasing, you know, a song every three weeks during the pandemic and not now when it's half open, but you've been doing it deep within pure lockdown. Is technology really an incredibly important part of your lives as of your musicians, of your artists, of your singer songwriters? Whether I like it or not, technology is the most important part right now, apart from the creativity and the content. And uh, ever since the lockdown, honestly, we work, actually worked more than uh, we worked before lockdown. I have never heard about Zoom before March, you know. True. I never knew right. the blue, uh, there is a software called Blue Jeans and all these things. So uh, <laughs> I remember the first thing we did was uh, the Rise India Awards. We tied up with Red FM and we did a uh, right. award which was live on multiple platforms at the same time. TikTok was existing, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. And there were so many artists and we did that. We also actually shot a video with two of our artists, both in their home on their phones there was a software which you can actually download on the phone and it gives you a 4k resolution you know and uh, uh, the director the director was sitting in one place the dop was another place both the singers were in, in their home and we actually shot a video and released the video so we would not even have wow. thought about it if, uh, before the lockdown <laughs> then we also did a reality show called mimicry a superstar with ptm where the we actually did a digital uh, reality contest we actually did a lot of things then we did all about music it was completely digital i mean you're a part of it and uh, you know uh, we I were skeptical first that whether we should do it not do it do it not do it but then we 
uh, we integrated three, four technologies into one platform. Uh, we integrated Zoom, we integrated a backstage uh, uh, management where you do exhibitions and connect corner. So technology is the most important part. And honestly, uh, even if the pandemic is over, I am quite certain and sure now technology is not going to be our part, uh, going to be a part of our lives. Today, it is not humiliating or it is not insulting to tell somebody that, listen, can we do the meeting on Zoom? So uh, one year back, if you tell somebody that, listen, I can't come to you, let's do a video call. It might feel that he had me, it's not important I was doing, but now it's cool, I right? You can, you can save time. So I realized during the pandemic that I'm actually working more because generally you spend a lot of time in meeting people, casually chatting about things, uh, traveling from one place to the other, going to the office, coming back to the office. Right now, in the 24 hours, whatever time you're not spending with your family and other things uh, and sleeping, you actually you're have you're a 12-hour window. You're like a, like a full 12-hour window. So actually, work uh, so right. technology, technology is... I, I, uh, I just want to... I agree. I want to. I want to come to you, Sanal, with exactly what he said two minutes ago. So Tasim, for example, did Rise India Awards, and he, and all of them, he said Rise India Awards with uh, Red FM. Something else with PTF. Uh, Carlton is a, a key example of all of this stuff he's doing with Kingfisher, and so on. Everywhere, if you see the intersection of music, youth, but all of that stuff, there is one piece that we haven't really discussed, which is the brands. The brands, which is your your department and and and, and you're the yeah. you're the in-house expert on this. Obviously, brands are spending money tremendously in this cross section of their what no what they're actually buying is they're buying the technology which says in our brain that music actually is a social connector. The more people you connect, the more people the brands can get to. The more people their uh, you know their their messaging can get to. I'm sure Smule works with a whole bunch of you know brands as well. There may be some morning thing with Nescafe and some afternoon thing with something else. I don't even know, but I'm 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 pretty sure there. I want you to tell me from not from a advertising guy who's creating for the brands, but since you're closest to the brands, I want you to sit on a brand's chair, on a CMO's chair, and tell me all of the stuff that these guys are saying in this highly digitally social world. Do you consider as a as a chief marketing officer who's your best friend in McDowell's or whatever brands you work with, are they viewing it as as effective that their money is well spent? Or do they think, yeah, nahi, yaar, ye television pe 30 seconds nahi chalega to nahi hoga? Do you see that transference of old world media where unless you saw a full page ad in the front page of Times of India, you weren't excited about the fact that you could reach out and yell your message yeah. to enough people? But in this digital world, in all of these examples, because you know what what is digital media, right? They are individually tiny microcosms. When you put them all together, depending on how many you can get together, becomes a humongous sphere of influence, right? Now, whether it's using social media, whether it's using digital media, whether it's YouTube, whatever have you, I want you to tell me: Are you seeing this transference? Are our clients saying, "Okay, this is a a, a great solution"? Or is it like, nay, nay, bye. let's let the pandemic end and we will go back to the good old digital world of, you know, pre-digital of YouTube advertising only, which is at the end of digital and everything else, which is television and uh, print and so on and so forth. No, absolutely. I mean, the, the brands are seeing it and it's for uh, not only brands, uh, uh, betterment of the brand, but for brand survival also, it's really, really important. And all the big brands are now actually seeing the importance. And uh, like, for example, even if you take McDowell's number one, they have been seen, they've, they've seen it much, much earlier, you know, and many other brands, for example, all the Yari Jam. So it's not just a television commercial going out, although uh, TV and, uh, you know, the traditional television commercial still, still gives a lot of reach in India. But once you do that, that's not the only thing that's enough in today's day and age. And brands are realizing that you need to activate it through social media. You need to have uh, work with influencers, whether they are celeb influencers or, uh, you know, whether it's user generated content. One thing that brands personally, I feel that brands need to do now much more is that we've been all chatting about the fact that technology has given these tremendous tools uh, to everybody. You know, a creation has become democratized. You know, there are fantastic Correct. creators out there who are you know, coming up, you know, with the, you know, uh, 10 million uh, views, 20 million views, 50 million views, you know, they are seeing all that happen right around. And it's these, the next stage that needs to happen.
happen quickly is that brands start to associate with these creators also some brands are doing it we need to find these creators out there and actually associate with them and work with them to uh, whatever your your platform messages you know you kind of cascade it down right through celeb influencers through digital influencers but also through these creators you know some of these creators so let me let me let me let me put you on the spot right there and ask you a very pointed question sanan you got a 100 bucks as an advertising agency as ogilvy or your own own company now to create a massive campaign where 80% in the old world or 90% was television radio print and all the old world media and 10 20% was digital in the maybe in the last few years that has skewed a little bit to 20 30% 40% post pandemic the post pandemic world do you believe it's going to be 50 50 and or is going to be 80 20 where digital will lead everything and the other old world mediums the support will come from there what's your perspective as an advertiser you know, see, so uh, this uh, the you i mean the this buck 100 bucks right more and more money will start to go into digital now because that's where the world is moving that's where the consumption is you know with now 5g coming in things are going to change that much more cheaper phones coming in that means everybody will be uh, accessing or consuming content on the phone so digital one cannot deny you know uh, we are already saying that by 2023 in india the digital spend will overtake television spend which is a very very big thing to to be said about india you know but that's what the figure oh, is yeah, saying yeah. by oh, 2023 yeah. yeah yeah and i think uh, i think I mean, pandemic has only accelerated the process like it has done in many different fields you know Uh, one one sure, small I thing agree. that came to my one small uh, uh, thought that had come to me when we are talking about smule is that you know when you uh, when people celebrate together it's not as uh, it doesn't bring people together as much as when people are in difficult times together and connected to, to the fact that ki dar lage to gana ga you know remember that there was a song which says dar lage to gana ga you know i think what sure. smule has done this music has done is brought people together and and given a rare it's a it's actual actually public service you know given them this shared way of celebrating shared way of connecting you know so uh, uh, i think anybody who's exactly. any 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 tech or any person people uh, uh, carlton people like you also who are through music bringing people together at these points this no, point in time it's, are it's incredible it's incredible i i i i mean i'm i'm telling you i was i was absolutely shell shock when somebody told me that you know her mum sitting in canada in toronto uh, passed away uh, uh, looking at my gig uh, on her ipad i mean it 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 just freaked me out i mean it, 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 it i mean so so you don't even know the, these kind of these kind of things that you've been doing i mean uh, it's it's it, it, it's crazy i mean it, it gives you goosebumps uh, to know that you okay. uh, you are so thinking about yeah yeah true so we are we are out of time it's been i mean honestly you know four of us you put us in a room and you discuss uh, you know music and tech i mean we can go on for literally all day but i just want to thank all four of you thank you tarsan thank you sanal thank you viral thank you uh, cb for this incredible chat i think we covered the essence of what we needed to cover we truly believe that uh, you know uh, the fact that you're even celebrating the fact that there is a need for a, a a global trends festival and we're discussing music as one of the big trends and and music being a social uh, connector being a big trend uh, is absolutely true i think everything that we've said goes to sort of prove that technology with smule and you know through our cumulative smule view i think we all agree that it's a it's, it's an absolute win so thank you very much gentlemen and uh, we will pick this up offline and have a longer chat the next time we meet thanks thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.